from the rising of the sun to its setting. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Good afternoon and welcome to Minnesota Valley's Daily Holy Week Devotion. Let us begin with Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Those who love your salvation may say evermore, God is great, but I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help, my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Let us pray. O oh Lord, although we may be miles apart, we are gathered together in worship, and we know that you are with us. The mysteries of the internet and Wi-Fi do not compare to the mystery of your Holy Spirit that binds us together, not with just those in this service, but with all your children. So we pray that your Spirit will strengthen our bonds with each other as we journey through this Holy Week. Amen. The Gospel reading for today comes from John chapter 13 verses 21 through 32. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciple looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one who Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you're going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that maybe because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. The epistle reading is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings us so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, that you may not grow weary or lose heart. This is the word of the Lord. We are all surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I'm sure all of us have had one or two people in our lives who've gone before us that were crucial in our faith development. For me, like many people, my mother was a great witness of faith. She did struggle when I went to seminary and said to me very sternly, don't think all that fancy learning you're going to do is going to shake my faith. I never quite knew what she meant by that, but my mom didn't hesitate to tell me what she was thinking. She didn't hesitate to keep me in my place either. For example, I had kind of a long college career. And when I finally did graduate, she sent me a card. On the front of the card was the picture of the devil sitting on a frozen wasteland. I opened the card and it said, I heard you graduated. And when I called her up to tell her that I was getting married, there was a, a pause. And after a moment, she said, well, Christy seems like a really nice person. Is she sure she knows what she's doing? Now, my mom was Presbyterian all my life, but she was raised Catholic. 
ne you never quite lose all that Catholicism. So one day when I was in college, I, I got a letter. No return address. I opened it up. It was a card with a $20 bill. And the only thing the card said was St. Jude. Now you may know that St. Jude was the patron saint of desperate cases and lost causes. Over the years, my mom has appeared in a number of my sermons. Once I shared an experience of an Easter when I was young. My brother, who was probably four or five, was in the hospital suffering from a life-threatening asthma attack. That was back in the time when parents weren't allowed to spend the night with their children. Neither, even though my brother was past the immediate crisis stage, there was still a lot of worry as my mother drove home that Saturday night before Easter. As she drove, she remembered that she hadn't bought any Easter treats for the rest of us kids. She stopped at the local five and dime store only to find that they had just closed. She pounded on the door and explained to the owner her situation. Not only did he reopen the store, he told her that all the Easter merchandise was going on sale the very next day. He would give her the discount. When I told my mom I used that story in my sermon, she told me the rest of the story. She had arrived home late that Saturday night. My dad had spent the day with me and my other two siblings, but the house was a mess. Not only did she have to clean, prepare Easter baskets, boil and dye eggs, she had committed herself to frying chicken for an Easter dinner. It was well past midnight before she got to frying the chicken. And in the midst of her panic and worry, she had an epiphany. The candy, eggs, and even that piece of half-fried chicken she was staring at really didn't matter. And when she thought about her son in the hospital, she realized that was the point of Easter. God is with us. Even if the worst was to happen, she knew death was not final. The promise of that first Easter was the promise of resurrection for all and the promise of a heavenly reunion and suddenly, she was at peace. My mom passed away about a year ago, but her faith still gives me peace. And I am strengthened that she is now part of that great cloud of witnesses. May faith of those who have gone before us help us persevere this Holy Week. And may we not grow weary or lose heart. The following prayer is shared by the stated clerk, Reverend Dr. J. Herbert. Let us pray together. We pray for healing for those who are infected. In our country, in all the places the virus has spread. We pray for those who have already lost loved ones to the illness and those who will yet suffer such loss. We pray for doctors, nurses, and aides providing medical care for insight in their caring and for their health and well-being. We pray for wisdom for the medical and scientific experts who are desperately seeking ways to control the spread of the virus. We pray for public officials who must make the hard decisions about quarantining of those who may have been exposed to the virus. And we pray for all those whom those decisions feel like unjust imprisonment. We lift up the Christian churches throughout the world as they seek to bring Christ's healing presence and peace. We pray for God to keep us alert to the threats posed by such a worldwide crisis, remembering the millions of God's children who live in places where the availability of medical care is meager or non-existent. May God open our hearts, our financial resources, and our political will that the vision of a better future can become a reality for all of God's children. In the providence of the God who created us, in the passion of our Savior Jesus Christ who redeems us, and in the power of the Holy Spirit through whom God's will is done. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.